Greetings folks, Lance here. So as you can see, got the Charge Verter 5KW installed. And I did an unboxing video where I kind of explained why I got this. And it's actually a very easy install if you have an EG4 system. Like that one. Of course, uh, the cabinets. So, the thing is, is I actually have an Outback power system. And I've already taken the face off here because we're going to look inside a bit. But the install for an EG4 system is actually very simple. You just run the 240 cable to your generator. This runs out to my generator. And then you have your positive and negative that comes out. And you would just run those directly, depending on how your setup is, to your bus bars, you know, positive, negative. Or if you only have one cabinet, you don't have those bus bars, you can just run it directly into the bus bars in the cabinet very simple very simple and then there are only two settings that you have to be concerned about the voltage now it comes the default is 48 volts and we're not going to cover the scope but it ain't going to be 48 volts you use the settings and maybe you guys have played around with charge settings and every system might be a little bit different. But the voltage, I'm not gonna talk about what I use because it, it, it gets kind of confusing. But uh, 100 amps is its max. You can take it down if you have a smaller generator. Uh, I typically use the one, full 100 amps. But what's really different here is that since I have an Outback power system, it has no way of communicating with the BMSs in the EG4 batteries. So what we have to do is, we'll just run the, the positive down into this bus bar or into the bus bar in the cabinet. And then we're gonna run the negative into the shunt, one of the shunts, in this case I use shunt C, which is right there. That's shunt C. So this black cable here is the negative that runs into shunt C. And the reason we need to do that is that Outback Power needs to understand the current flow in order to understand the state of charge of these batteries. If we don't do that, over time, we'll be charging the batteries, but Outback will have no way of knowing that the batteries are charged. And it will actually get to a point where it'll just shut down the system. So by running it through the shunt, we can track the state of charge of the batteries. And it may not be 100% precise, but it's pretty close. And you may have to play with the Outback power settings a little bit just to tweak it, but it's close enough out of the box. It's close enough for me. And we'll see that here in a bit when I actually run the generator and we're charging. So I'm going to go ahead and start the generator, get this going, and then we'll take a look at the Outback power screen to see how it's tracking the charge So here we are at the Outback power Monitoring Screen and this actually runs as a web service on the Outback power system specifically on the mate 3s But you can see we have three channels here and these correspond to the the shunts so typically channel B and C 
they read my two solar arrays and the sun is just now starting to come up so we have a little power coming in on B and a little bit on C but then you can see we got uh, about about 95 amps and that is coming in from the charged verter charger so because the shunt can now see that power coming in channel a is reading the usage on the house so our net is about 65 amps and because of that we're seeing the state of charge actually go up from my minimum today of 77 percent we're now up to 79 percent now if we were to run the charge verter directly to the batteries there would be no way for Outback to read this and the minimum or the excuse me the state of charge would just keep going down and down and down as I use it and I have a threshold set I think it's 25 percent it would get down to 25 percent and the inverter would just shut off so this gives us a way of monitoring the state of charge on the EG4 batteries in Outback. Now there may be some other systems out there that do not communicate with EG4 where this may be helpful as well. You're going to need some sort of shunt system, some sort of way to track the state of charge for your particular system. And systems that have a way of communicating with the EG4 batteries, you can always just connect directly to the batteries to charge them. But in the case of Outback Power and maybe some other manufacturers, you're going to need a way of running the charge through some sort of shunt, some, some way to monitor that input. So, that's it in a nutshell. That's the charge verter. 5 kilowatt charger running through an Outback power system. Of course, it has the shunt, the FNDC. Most of you guys are going to be familiar with that if uh, you're running Outback power. But that's how it's done. Pretty straightforward.